This week we're going to be talking about how we make our big shark leaders. We fish in the Florida Panhandle and these, you could use them anywhere, but these are specifically designed for the Florida Panhandle. And for those big hoss sharks. Oh yeah. Come on, let's go. This week's episode is sponsored by Sandbar Tackle. Now these guys make some fantastic shark fishing hooks. This is their 18 knot. This is their 24 knot. These both are Florida and Texas legal. They are not stainless steel, and they keep you tight on some really big sharks. Hey. Go check out SandbarTackle.com because they also have a wide selection of hooks for anything from trout all the way to swordfish, and they will keep you tight on some really big fish. Oh yeah. So before we dive into this video and we go over how we make it and all the materials and stuff like this, the leaders we are about to make, they're for land-based shark fishing. So you could probably tweak them to use off the boat, um, but you're not casting these leaders from the beach. These are yak deployment leaders for land-based shark fishing, you know, obviously targeting sharks. And for big sharks, we make some leaders for smaller sharks, the six, seven, five, even down to the three and four foot range, but these are for the big ones. Big houses only. The materials that you're going to need, you're going to want to measure out 50 feet, a 1,200 pound mono, need three stainless steel crimps, four that match up for the same size as the 1,200 pound mono, two 12 watt Roscoe swivels, big houses, of course, a 600 pound snap swivel, about six feet, a doubled 19 wire. Big house wire. Sandbar tackle hook, and today we're going to be making it with our 18 knot and about three or four inches of industrial grade heat shrink. You. So we're going to go ahead and get started in making these leaders here. So you're going to want to start out, get your 1,200 pound LP mono. We love this stuff, and people ask us two questions when we bring this out: why 1,200 pound and why 50 feet? I'll start with the 50 foot question. We make our leader so long because we do run a lot of shark fishing trips. We guide shark fishing trips on the beach. And most of the time I'm on the rod helping the client get out of the harness when we've got the shark on the beach, that kind of stuff. Adam is always on the leader. I do not want my leader man in the winter time and six foot waves in the middle of the night going chest deep to get a hold of a leader. That way this shark can be at 50 foot, the shark can be in the gut, which our gut's only 30 yards maybe out. The shark can be in the gut, in deep water, and my leader man can be dry on dry sand, wrapping up in the leader. And then once he wraps up and gets a good couple wrap ups, I can get the client or you know your person or your buddy or whoever out of the harness and I can assist in getting on that leader too. And then that 1200 is obviously pretty self-explanatory. Then this is like flipping rope. Okay. You know, 1200 pound is just like rope. Um, once you uh, once you get a hold of it, you can wrap up, and you're not worrying about you know 600 pound mono. You may think of that, but 600 pound mono will dig into your arms. If a shark, tw 10 foot shark turns, he's gonna dig into your arms. Especially Adam. if you aren't tight, it'll keep on going, and it'll go right through you. Yeah, Adam Adam has some gnarly scars mm -hmm. from back in the day when we didn't use 1200 pounds. So 1200 pound, 50 foot. Um, you're gonna go ahead and take it. Find one of your ends. One of the uh, cheats we like to do on this is go ahead and cut it at an angle. So cut that, cut it at an angle, they're gonna, the crimps are gonna slide on. So we're gonna make this the top of our leader, you know, where you're gonna attach your, uh, your main line. Slide that crimp on, again, it's gonna slide on real easy if you go ahead and cut them at an angle. Put your 12 out Roscoe swivel. Now a lot of guys are gonna tell you you need to offshore loop and you need to double, triple crimp. Not true. Mm -hmm. This is 1200 pound mono and if you crimp these things right and you don't need an offshore loop in 1200 pound mono, you, you just don't. So. Um, a lot of the sport fishing guys that target marlin are going to tell you, don't leave a big loop here either because your, your swivel is going to pop around and there's just so much that could go wrong. So cinch that, cinch that thing all the way down tight so that swivel is going to sit just like that. There's not a lot of play in it. It takes a little bit of force. That way you don't have anything going wrong. You're going to get your big crimps. Now you need a big set. You can get these from Lowe's, Home Depot. I think they're pipe crimpers or something <laughs> like that. But um, you can get them fairly cheap. You don't need these big ones if you're not using 1,200 pound, but you do need them if you're using 1,200 pound. 
So you're gonna get your buddy. He's gonna crimp the back side okay. once. Yep. And then the front side once. Good to go. Just two crimps. You're gonna get it good there, and that's not that's not coming off. I don't care who you are. Your 200 pound mono is gonna snap before anything okay. else. Most likely you're gonna snap if you're gonna put that much pressure on a fish. So um, when you've got this first part done, I go ahead and cycle all this mono. You want to get any tangles out, and you can inspect you can inspect that 1,200 pound mono as you go through here, looking for any nicks. Now we are at the other side of our mono, which is going to be the side you know we attach our wire and our hook to. So, do not forget this step; very important. Take your snap swivel, go ahead, put it on there. Forget about it for right now. Take two of your crimps. Again, this side is cut at an angle, so the crimps slide on easy. Slide both of your crimps. Put your Roscoe swivel on there, and this side you're going to take and leave a little bit bigger tag in. So go ahead and leave a big tag in. Same thing here. It's better to have too much than too little. Yeah, you can always cut it off. It's tough once you crimp them down to add any length on. So uh, same thing here. Get it tight. Slide that crimp all the way down. Don't leave a big loop. I don't care what Uncle Joe says. You don't need it. And then crimp her down. Same thing, only need a couple. Now you don't need, it definitely makes it easier having somebody, especially on these big crimps, but um, land-based shark fishing is a team sport. So right. Even you, should, the leaders. you should always have a buddy. So you're gonna take this 1200 pound section, and as you can see here, I'm just doubling it back over itself. Now here is a very, very important thing that you need to take note of when making these leaders. So I got my end here that's been doubled back over. I'm going to slide my crimp over. Now we're cutting these, this mono at an angle to slide the crimp on easy. Now at the top, you're not, you're not going to have, you know, once you get a couple wraps on, you're not having to worry about the top. But the bottom here is your hands are, especially when you're really tight on that shark, your, your hands are going to be all around here. And if you leave this section like this, that mono passes back through your hand. It's going to jab you, tear your hand up, and cuts around saltwater and sharks just is not a good idea. So go ahead and slide that crimp back and cover up that end because this is really just holding your wraps. This isn't this crimp right here is not saving your leader from unraveling. This is just holding on your wrap so it doesn't all unravel. So I'm going to cover it up. Let him crimp on the top side first. Good. Yep. And then I'm going to go ahead and slide down right on the end here and let him mash down that end. That way it's real seamless. You can see it's just, I mean, your hands can pass back over that all day long and you don't have to worry about your hand getting all mm -hmm. tore up and ripped up. So now go ahead, bust out your number 19 wire. We went ahead and pre-cut, like he said, about six foot of number 19 wire cut, two sections. Try to get them as close as possible. Um, it's not a giant deal if you're a quarter of an inch off it's a pretty big deal if you're two inches off so um, go ahead and match your ends match your ends up over here and go ahead and start slide them both through and uh, there's tons of video videos on youtube of a good haywire twist black tip h does a good video so check those out if you don't know i'm just going to go ahead and do these um, i leave about six inches double it over and start your haywire twist you want again you want everything tight you don't want to leave big loops anything like that and you want both wires seemingly joining together you don't want one wrapping around the other you can always start with the swivel end before you start with the hook in yeah start with that whenever you're doing this as you can see all this is flopping around you don't want the hook going into you. <laughs> yeah so always start with your okay. swivel end so you got your hay wires of maybe three, maybe four hay wires. Don't do more than four hay wires. You don't need more than four. Same thing on your barrel wraps. Just knock out about three barrel wraps. Um, if you do too many barrel wraps or too many hay wires, you're going to heat up that wire and it's going to make it weak. I'll show you here just in a second yeah, what happens. It can also burn your hands. Yeah, it'll burn your hands up for the, for the soft, the soft hands. So this is a big, another one of those things you really want to pay attention to when you're making these leaders. Don't take wire cutters and cut these. You thought, you know, we were talking about this jabbing into your hand down here. This will not jab into your hand. This will be like a It'll knife. It. It, will, it will open your hand up and it will do a lot of damage. Okay. So take these and you can do them one at a time or you can do them two at a time. Just bend them back and forth, back and forth. And this is what you're doing here and why you don't want to do so many twists is you're heating it up. So you're going to go back and forth, and you can feel it getting hot down at the base of it, and it's just going to snap 
Snapped one off and got two off. So now you've got a smooth and you can pass your hand over that all day long and you're not cutting yourself up. But if you cut them, it will not end pretty. So and the again, tighter the barrel wraps are, the better. Yeah. The so I'll show you. Easier, they'll break off. Make them tight. Make it all tight and pretty. And then you're going to go ahead, same thing. Nice to have a buddy who can hold your swivel. Um, and when you double this 19 wire up, same thing. Just like anything we've done in the sleeter, you want it tight because that's what's going to be the best. Anything loose shark fishing is going to end in a fail. So mm -hmm. loose line, loose hooks, <laughs> loose leaders. So you're tightening everything up. And I'm making these, I'm going to pull them, I'm pulling them tight as I go. So it's kind of like a double over, tight, double over, tight. He's holding constant pressure on it. We're going to go all the way up. So now you got to your end. I'm going to leave about six inches here of it, you know, not doubled over because you don't have to worry about it on the other side of your hook. Get your sandbar tackle hook. Your leaders will not be good if you don't put a sandbar tackle hook. And I promise you, I'm not calling people out, but if you put a catch-all tackle hook, especially the new ones on the end, you will not hook up with fish. These hooks are sharp. They stick fish. They hold fish. They can hold a lot of pressure. The catch-all tackle hooks will rust out. They're, they come dull. It's Back horrible. whenever we used to use catch-alls, we had to sharpen every single hook. Yeah, we had hook, to sharpen them. them. Then, you, had, break, then yeah. you break your oxidation layer, so then your hook starts rusting out. Anyways, get your sandbar tackle hook. We love their 18-knot hooks for smaller fish baits like Bonita, half a kingfish, amber jackheads, that kind of stuff. The 24 aughts are great for huge stingrays, whole kingfish. Yeah, huge black drum pieces. So we're going to make an 18 knot leader today. Again, leaving that section of non-doubled up 19 wire, I'm going to push it through. Again, you can see it's just, it's just not doubled up there. And uh, same thing over here. Haywire. Sucker down. Oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Mm. Would have been bad. Yes. So, uh, like I almost did there. Take your heat shrink and slide that thing on the hook. You got a good haywire twist on your hook. You got your heat shrink already on your hook. So you're just going to take that heat shrink and slide it right over the hook. You want everything kind of snug. We get, um, you know, uh, I think it's one and a third quarter inch. Um, but you're going to slide it over to where you're kind of covering your end hook. You're covering a little bit of your haywire. Um, you don't have to cut them this long, but you really want to make sure you cover a little bit of the shank and a little bit of your haywire twist. Um, and we'll explain that later. And then go ahead and get some type of heat source. We use this little flamethrower propane. burns o -matic. Yeah, the burns o -matic. You know, your heat shrink is hot. It's obviously still very moldable. So um, what we do is we take it, put it underneath the sink, put some cold water on it, and it will freeze and it become very stiff. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you hold it straight. If you do it like this, it will it will lock like that. So Adam's going to go ahead and knock that out. Thank you, sir. All right, so now you got your heat shrink section. It is cooled off. It is now, you know, it's stiff. It's done. It's, you know, it's not going anywhere or build anything. And you can do this. People do this with electrical tape. They just wrap it up. Um, we found heat shrink to be more effective. It, you know, the electrical tape will get sand in it and water and become, un, you know, start unraveling eventually. So this is a foolproof way to get a good hook placement and then that will get you a good hook set. If you want to know more about how we hook our baits and why hook placement is important, is important, we got a video playing at the top right corner of your screen here that we go over hook placement and like, you know, why and that kind of stuff. So um, we've got, you know, a hook ready. So I told you guys to slide on that swivel and forget about it. So now let's unforget about it. Let's take it here and you're going to go to your doubled up section. Now this is where we got some of the leaders around here where you can see, you know, we've got the leaders or the weights zip tied on there. So basically you have two options here. You can just clip your weight here, put it out like this in a spider weight, you know, style fashion and just let it slide up and down the leader. Now a lot of guys do that, it's a free sliding leader. You can also mouse trap your shark bait like that, which is basically just putting pressure on the weight 
and when the shark takes it, you know, it sets the hook for itself. We love when we can get away with it. You know, we have pretty calm waves. We're not bragging when we say this, but we use, I mean, this is a 16 ounce weight. We use six or eight ounces on, you know, a normal day. So we can get away with some smaller weights, but what we like to do is fix the weight. So uh, we'll take it here, clip on our weight. That's, so you take your thing and we're just gonna, you know, you're gonna pass, you wanna pass the, uh, the weight split your doubled up section here and pass one of the legs. Someone did it too good. <laughs> so pass it through there and then you know you're just gonna zip tie your weights just like this. So you got your hook back here, your main line this way. Once you drop it off, it hits the bottom, pull it into the sand this way, and then it sits just like this with the bait behind it. Then whenever a shark grabs it, pulls it straight out and doesn't feel anything, then clicker goes off and you go set it. Yep. Thank y'all so much for watching. Hope y'all enjoyed it. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, and turn on the bell notifications if you want to keep up with the videos we will be posting weekly. Weekly videos coming at you. Let's go. It's a big house.